morning. <laughs> Good to see you all. <clears throat> Good to be together. Always enjoy these Sundays. Get to see one another. So, yeah, it's a very, very precious time. I always look forward to it. It's like this morning I woke up and I, f I actually felt very peaceful. It was really nice. I woke up early and normally there's something a little bit to do with the show. It's like, oh, what am I, what am I going to do? <laughs> there's a bit of that jitter. Um, but it wasn't so much there um, this morning. It was just, okay, just, just be peaceful. And in actual fact, then I um, went to the lessons and the second one on our practicing was, let me be still and listen to the truth. So I thought, oh, that was, a, that was a nice reminder of how I was feeling. And just as I was sat here, I was actually, I think it's, um, they're always remembering together. I think that's, that's the important thing about this time is that we need a lot of rem remembering. There's a lot of amnesia, a lot of sleep. <laughs> it really does feel that way. Um, in one minute you can be feeling alive and then the next minute you can drift off very easily on this journey and it's so it's so amazing that the mind can do that that we can forget so easily our, pu our purpose um, on this journey and I feel like these Sundays coming together is always to remember the purpose every day every day is to remember that um, purpose to together and I was just thinking about um, last week was the seeming resurrection, and that's every day. And we watched the movie um, Risen. I don't know whether you've seen that one. Um, 2016 it came out. And it's the tale of a um, Roman soldier um, who is part of the crucifying of Jesus and, and basically sees the resurrection for himself. But um, one of the interesting things that I really, I, I, I love about that movie is um, one of the scenes when he, um, he goes and meets his um, general or whatever you want to call him and um, he's just been in battle and he gets into the bath and he basically asks him what he wants and what he really wants is he really wants peace, that's what he wants. And he feels like he can go into the middle of the countryside and um, have a family, move up through the ranks and have wealth to be able to live that out, this life of peace without any war, without any death, basically. So he puts this strong prayer out there for peace and he doesn't actually realise what that, what that really means, um, that it's actually closer than, than he imagined because he wanted it so strong in his heart and um, that was actually my, my first prayer um, before I knew anything about the Course in Miracles or spirituality. I remember I began, um, I wanted to practice meditation. <clears throat> thought, okay, this, this seems pretty helpful. And I remember I went down to this local shop. They sold crystals and bits and pieces. And I was in there and these two ladies were really, really helpful. And they wanted, I said, I don't know. I didn't know anything about it. So they're like pulling out CDs. This one's really good. You can listen to them. And so I'm having this really like beautiful day um, with these ladies. And they're telling me about ones that they used in their meditation classes and everything like that. And it was like really, really gearing me up for this. Thought, okay, right, I really want to want to do this. So I I ended up choosing this CD. And um, they said, oh, make sure you set an in intention of of why why you're why you're doing all of this. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. And so I walked back home. It was about about a two hour walk actually. So it was it was kind of nice. It was in the summer, and I got back home and I was really in this in this good space, like, wow, okay, I'm really going to have a go at this, this meditation thing. And I thought, okay, yeah, better, better set my intention. And I thought, I just want peace. That was it. I just wanted peace. I think it was just peace from my thoughts. Just, God, I just seemed to be thinking all of the time, um, mainly about nonsense. 
so I just want this peace. And um, I remember um, sitting in the chair and I put on the CD and the CD was for 30 minutes. And I actually went all the way through the whole CD. It seemed like, it seemed like minutes. And my whole body was like shaking. And it was just so joyful. It was so wonderful. Um, almost beginner's luck, I think. <laughs> I had the beginner's luck. I was just open for it. And my whole body was like vibrating. And the only experience I could, I could relate it to, it was, like, it was like taking ecstasy. It was like taking drugs, really. I just thought, wow, okay, I came out of it and I thought, wow, it's like, it's like taking pure drugs. Like you don't have no come down off of this or anything. This is, this is great. This is wonderful. And I feel really, really peaceful. It really, really worked. Um, and then of course the mind gets in the way and wants to, wants to try and learn what meditation is. But in that moment, because I had no, no idea of really what I was doing, I was just, I was just taken away. Um, and then you start to you start to learn more about these things, and then it all it all becomes it becomes a block. And that's including like now, like the Course in Miracles. Eventually, that that will become a block. It will be let go of. It's just to to aid us now, but everything needs to be let go of. And I think the reason why I'm why I'm sharing that is like. It's like I had that beginner's luck because my mind was completely open and then as time goes on, whenever we learn anything, we think we know something. Think I, I know something about this journey or, or what I'm doing. And the whole kind of purpose is, is I don't know. And it's very hard to, to let go of not wanting to know and to open up to something that's far greater than, than my understanding of myself thinking that I know what, what is best for my healing. And so every, every day is like that, that meditation that I have is, is just letting go of, of not knowing and just, if it's in the meditation, it's just sitting there and just allowing whatever to be and allowing really the spirit to do the work, <laughs> not me. Like somehow I'm going to do this. I've I've got to figure it out, and it's and it's all it's all fear. It's all fear based. Or I like actually um, <laughs> what I read I, I read this week, and Jesus was using the words lack of love, and I thought oh that's a nice way of looking at looking at fear. We can say this whole thing our our whole minds have been geared up through lack of love. So no wonder that feels pretty uncomfortable. Um, it's something that we that we all want, and we've strived for that in the in in the world. It's a it's a, it's, it's a nice thing. We as as children, it's like you want to be loved. And in actual fact, when but before the ego um, forms, like you see how loving children are. They're just completely and utterly giving because they don't see, see the blocks to separation. It's, it's not really there. And seeing that in animals, actually. And one of my, um, one of my greatest healers has been um, our dog, Benito. <laughs> he's, he's only little. <laughs> he's a little thing. But he, um, he's, a, he's one of the greatest teachers we've got here, that's for sure. He's beyond, he's beyond most of us. <laughs> he's our teacher and he will he will give a good reflection as to what's what's happening um, and um, he's got a lot of love to give and it's funny actually our our journey wasn't always loving together but it's extremely loving now I never thought I'd love a dog in my life <laughs> I never I've never had a dog so um, I was asked to look after the dog at one time I thought wow why me? I, 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 know nothing, I know nothing about dogs. And he actually, he reflected back a lot of my anger. He was a, he's a street dog. He, he was picked up outside Guadalajara. And although he's only little, but he is really quite game actually. He's not frightened of other dogs. Um, and so I guess that was his like upbringing. So me and him sort of come together. 
um, these two street dogs, I guess. <laughs> and um, so I would see his behavior and I, and, and, and I completely would mirror back to me my own, my own mind. And um, yeah, he would get into a lot of trouble. He would pick on bigger dogs and um, bigger dogs, particularly around in Mexico, um, there's certain dogs that you, uh, you don't want to be messing around with. But Benito, um, he didn't kind of understand that. He likes to be the boss. He likes to be in, he likes to be in control. Um, and so I was having these reflections with him and we didn't get on very well. <laughs> um, I, I could say I actually hated him at, at a certain time because he was, he was vicious, but he was just showing me my own, my own attack thoughts. Um, and there was one time I remember when, when we were walking along and it was like, I just said, okay, listen, you, you're uncontrollable. You just do your own thing. You want to do your own thing and I'll just do my own thing. We'll just have to play it like that. <laughs> and, uh, people said he was untrainable, <laughs> but, he, but he, he wasn't. He wasn't untrainable. But he was just saying, no, I wanna, I'm, I wanna show you what you think you are. That's what, he, that's what he did for me. Yeah, I feel very grateful for that dog. Fuck. And so, it's almost like even in his swagger, how he would walk up the road, I think, God, you think you're so it. And he's like, yeah, that's what you, <laughs> that's what you think. <laughs> it was just all these little nuances that he would do were like reflecting back to my mind. And it's like, yeah, it's time to let go of all that. He was teaching me. And there was this, um, there was this particular time when um, I, I was going back to England, I was visiting my family at Christmas and so I left him for a week. <sighs> Jesus. Oh God. And when I came back, after the seven days, it was like, this immense love that he had for me. It was like pouring out of him. He was so, so happy to see me. And it was like I could, I could feel the love. I could really, really feel it. He was just, oh, just like jumping up at me. And like, because he's only little, so you could like hug him. And he was just so, so happy. And it was like, oh, God. It was like time to show the real reflection. He said, you know, now you're ready. I want to show you something. And then in that moment, I said, yeah, I'm, I'm completely committed to you. Yeah, and he does not stop giving love. He knows what his function is. He knows who he is. He is so loving. And it's like now he's so, he's so soft, he's so gentle. 
he used to he used to bite. <laughs> he used to be a bit tormented of people, but yeah, we work together, and he doesn't do that. He just wants to be around you, and he wants to love. <laughs> I can be gone for ten minutes, and he's. I come back, and he's he just wants to cry and give me love. Such a a, a wonderful, wonderful gift he's been truly. So that's what really, what this journey is all about. So I'm so grateful that we have these reflections. That you know he's a real teacher because he'll show you everything. <laughs> I remember listening to Paramahansa Yogananda, and he met his guru, and um, he was like. They knew they were going to meet before they met. He had images of him, and so when he met, he fell to the floor and um, kissed his feet like they do in India. And his master said, "She Yukteswa said, yeah, I've been waiting for you." And he said, "Yeah, I've been waiting for you too." And they came together. And um, Paramahansa Yogananda said, "Yeah, he would reflect everything. He would show me exactly." all my blocks to love's presence and it was tough it wasn't easy to see that going through that dismantling but underneath it was just the pure unconditional love that was that was always there <laughs> and it was interesting he he spoke about like if you wanted to try if you wanted to try and please his master and and try and give him love as we see it in the world he would he would not he would not waver. No, that's not the real love. You have to find that for yourself. That's not going to be given here. It's who you are. No one can give it to you. You can reflect it back, but you have to remember for yourself. And that's what Benito does, he reflects it back and says, remember, as we're doing right now, remember, remembering, remembering together, that that's what we are. I want to really, really experience that with all our hearts. You might have someone or or a pet or something that reflects that back to you now. Something that's telling you to go towards the light, to illumine your mind, to step out of this, to find that in your heart, the truth. truth of what you are. We're not even going to find it in that book. <laughs> as much as I love that book, it has to be experienced, it has to be known. And so I have to let go of my knowing. <laughs> really hard. <laughs> find that one really, really hard. That I don't know my own best interests can see I keep coming back round to this. Just more letting go. More letting go of lack of love. And returning to love. Yeah, I just feel to read us. Read a prayer. I will not be afraid of love today. If I could realize but this today, 
salvation would be reached for all the world. This the decision not to be insane and to accept myself as God himself, my Father and my Source created me. This the determination not to be asleep in dreams of death, while truth remains forever living in the joy of love. And this the choice to recognise the self whom God created as the son he loves, and who remains my one identity. Father, your name is love, and so is mine. Such is the truth. And can the truth be changed by merely giving it another name? The name of fear is simply a mistake. Let me not be afraid of truth today. It just reminds me of um, things can be more simple than, than we like to make them. Uh, this week I had, a, I had a beautiful joining with a, with a dear mighty companion. They messaged me <laughs> going through something. Um, they're looking after some books for me. We have books all around the world for when we do tours and gatherings and um, the people can sell them uh, for people who want to want to receive the message. So we have them all scattered around the world, which is such a wonderful thing. And one of my friends was was concerned about about the books, what she was going to do, and wanted my advice. And uh, that's always a funny thing, advice. I, okay, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, so we go into that, we go into that prayer together and we just sit and we, okay, what's, what's, what's going on? I don't know the answers to this. And it was a beautiful, beautiful thing because the answer was the birds. The birds were tweeting and they do a lot in, in Mexico. And it would have reminded her of the prayer of her heart. And her guidance was, no, be in nature. Listen to the birds. Walk in nature. Enjoy nature. Be with nature. You'll find me there. That was her, that was her guidance. <laughs> so here we are, we're on this call. And it's seemingly we've got a dilemma. We've got a, we've got a situation. What are we going to do with these books? So really, it's not really about the books. It's simply about the healing and just listening to the birds. We just sat listening to the birds together and it was like everything just, just lifted off completely. I just felt so much peace and we just laughed. We were just laughing at the end of it. Like everything was completely and utterly cleared up. And it's like, look after the books, don't look after the books. It doesn't matter. It's, it's irrelevant. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What's going to reveal itself is going to reveal itself. We just listen and follow and it will be shown. Not one of those answers is right or wrong. It just simply is. Listen to the birds. <laughs> 
And it was funny, she actually reminded me of last week I was talking about the birds and I had an experience with birds. And I love the birds because when you hear them chirping, you can remember your, remember your purpose. Because they don't forget their purpose, do they? They're chirping away there. They're singing their song of who they are. And so I like to remember that. <laughs> so yeah, it's like these, these things that come up, I like to make them complicated. And I like to think that I'm gonna figure it out. But in this situation, it was, it was the birds that, that, that helped with that situation. And so we never really know what's, what's gonna help. Think that we have to really dig into our minds into the treachery and whatever, and it can be very, very simple. Just listen to the birds. Just go for a walk. Just be gentle. And I think, I think that's a very important lesson for me. It may seem very simple, but I think it's very, very important. <clears throat> Particularly on this journey, because we can get pretty hard on ourselves. I can be very hard and, and shut down and feel, God, this is so hard and I don't know what to do. And you feel like you're failing. But yet you can listen to the birds. The spirit's always with you, that's the thing. That never changes. The form may change. <laughs> but who you really are doesn't change. The changeless reality. And that's, that's what the birds remind us of. They don't change their song. <laughs> It's that saying from the Course, make each day different by making it all the same. Being in the one mind that never changes. And yeah, I've been having this by my bedside. I've been reading um, from the mystical teachings of Jesus. And then I, 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 turned, I turned the book open the other day and I, I turned to this and I thought, oh, this is really, really helpful. And it said, what if I cannot do what you ask? That's a, that's a pretty good question, isn't it, that we all ask ourselves. There can be a lot of fear of, of um, what might happen fear of the future. What if I cannot do what you ask? You can do anything I ask. I have asked you to perform miracles and have made it clear that miracles are natural, corrective, healing and universal. There is nothing they cannot do, but they cannot be performed in the spirit of doubt or fear. When you are afraid of anything, you are acknowledging its power to hurt you. Remember that where your heart is, there is your treasure also. You believe in what you value. If you are afraid, you are valuing wrongly. Your understanding will then inevitably value wrongly. And by endowing all thoughts with equal power, with inevitability, and inevitably destroy peace, will then inevitably value wrongly and be endowed all thoughts with equal power, will inevitably destroy peace. That is why the Bible speaks of the peace of God, which passeth any kind. It denies the ability of anything not of God to affect you. 
This is the proper use of denial. It is not used to hide anything, but to correct error. It brings all errors into the light, and since error and darkness are the same, it corrects error automatically. Yeah, so we can just correct all those errors. All those errors of fear, we can let them go together. Ah, so thank you so much, as always, for being here. Yeah, many blessings and lots of love. <laughs>